Your Facebook is back up and running, but the social media platform is going to be under pressure today. In Washington, a whistleblower, Francis Haugen, is set to testify in a high-stakes Senate hearing about protecting children online. In a 60 Minutes interview that aired over the weekend, Haugen accused Facebook of choosing profits over safety while betraying democracy. It was a rough day for the social media giant after also suffering a worldwide outage for several hours across its platforms yesterday, including Instagram and WhatsApp. Laura Podesta has the very latest. Laura, everything okay with your social media platforms? It's all right now. The social media sites were largely back up and running around 5.30 p.m. Eastern yesterday following what was a six-hour outage. The situation hampered communication for businesses large and small and showed us just how important Facebook and its subsidiaries are to allow people around the world to connect. Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen testifies before Congress today. In prepared remarks obtained by CBS News, she says the company's leadership knows ways to make Facebook and Instagram safer and won't make the necessary changes because they have put their immense profits before people. What was good for the public and what was good for Facebook? The former product manager spoke to 60 Minutes. Facebook has realized that if they change the algorithm to be safer, people will spend less time on the site, they'll click on less ads, they'll make less money. Haugen filed at least eight separate complaints with the Securities and Exchange Commission after copying thousands of pages of internal research. Facebook's own words, their own studies and surveys. Senator Richard Blumenthal is eyeing stronger regulations. They've made no meaningful reforms. They've done no disclosure. They've made no commitment to really take any meaningful action. Facebook said in a statement, we continue to make significant improvements to tackle the spread of misinformation and harmful content. To suggest we encourage bad content and do nothing is just not true. The company is very good at talking about the research that shows that they're good for people, but then they play down or they don't disclose at all the ways in which they are not good for their users. The hearing comes a day after Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp were down for several hours. Facebook fell along with other big tech stocks yesterday, sliding nearly 5%. And Forbes reported that Mark Zuckerberg alone lost nearly $6 billion. Anne-Marie. Somehow, I think he'll recuperate. Um, <laughs> Laura, thank you very much. Exactly, thanks. Um, so for more analysis on this, I want to bring in Dan Patterson. So, hey, listen, Dan, uh, Laura mentioned that Facebook said that the outage was due to configuration changes on the backbone routers that coordinate network traffic between our data centers. And then when they said that, I said, oh, that, ex that explains it. I actually said something more akin to what? what? What does that mean? So can you please tell us what that means? <laughs> Yeah, let's break down the WTF of the Facebook fail tech yesterday. <laughs> uh, look, I, I spent a long time talking with technical experts who tried to explain what was happening. You know, the fascinating thing is that Facebook is a tech giant with scale that's kind of inconceivable, and yet it appears as though a human error or a small glitch is something that brought the sites down uh, for almost six hours yesterday. So bear with me, the tech's not too bad. So the DNS system, that's a domain name system, it's kind of like the phone book of the internet. When you type in facebook.com, that's a real word, and computers translate to that to an IP address that kind of routes your computer to the right, to the correct place. Now, Facebook and all other sites have additional security and additional technology that finds the best path for the traffic to take. Without getting into the precise details of how this happens, uh, it's when there is a small misconfiguration, you can have cascading effects of these sites not talking to each other, but trying to. It's kind of like knocking on the door of that house and getting no response, but more and more people gathering outside of the house continuing to knock. 
Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I, like many people, ran to Reddit to try and get more information about it. And there was a, a suggestion on Reddit, and it could be wrong, because you never know who's on there, that the fact that we were all also trying to get on these sites was perhaps even sort of contributing to the problem or, exagger or exacerbating it. It might not have been. Um, but can you talk about sort of the impact of yesterday's outage on Facebook and its other platforms like Instagram and WhatsApp? Yeah, well, as we heard and saw, the stock was off um, about five, almost six percent, uh, although it did start to tick up by the end of the day. Now, look, the sites were inactive for a long time mm. and Facebook is weathering yet another controversy. It seems like it's a terrible time to be Facebook, except when you look at precedent historically, uh, when Facebook has experienced problems like this, they typically uh, roll out PR wait for the problem to blow over, and then everything goes back to normal, including the stock as well as uh, Mark Zuckerberg's internal wealth or personal wealth. So, uh, you know, there was a big impact. It, it, this was all four of Facebook's major properties, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus, the VR software. Uh, but uh, the stock at, at close yesterday was already starting to do exactly that, which is tick back up. Yeah, you know, it, I actually was just sort of a funny little story to me until I tried to sign on to Oculus and I couldn't. As you know, I work out every day using my Oculus. And then I then it really I realized, oh, wait a minute, we we're so connected to Facebook in ways that maybe I, uh, you're not aware of, even though I know that Facebook owns Oculus. My daughter tried to sign into her favorite game last night after school after reading a chapter from her book. Um, and she couldn't sign in because she signs in using my Facebook account because she doesn't have an email account. So I allowed her to do that. Um, so there were actually a lot of other apps and services that were affected by this outage. Yeah, uh, this kind of shows the global scale and reach of Facebook and sites like it. Every time you do the sign in with Facebook, you probably don't think, hey, I'm visiting Facebook and you're not going to a Facebook domain, but you are inviting Facebook to be that third party that uh, handles your credentials. And so uh, once again, kind of going back to the metaphor of people standing outside of a house, knocking and waiting to come in the door, more and more people trying to access their apps uh, or log in just generates more and more data that is very hard for the servers to manage. And so there's kind of this buildup or a, a blockage that prevented sites from communicating with each other. So I mentioned I was on Reddit, and boy, you know, the Tin Hat people, they were coming out. Some uh, just in, you know, tongue-in-cheek. Others were quite serious because it sure seemed coincidental that all of this happened after the 60 Minutes uh, interview that, you know, talked to the, the Facebook whistleblower, uh, Francis Haugen, who is going to be testifying before lawmakers today. It, it just let's, let's clear the air. Any possible connection between the outage and the whistleblower interview? No, right now there is no evidence that uh, would indicate there is uh, a cyber attack or sabotage or any other type of malicious activity. Of course, if we do have evidence, we'll let you know. But it's very important to make sure that even though the timing sure seems coincidental, uh, we should not conflate those two issues. Yeah, that being said, um, Haugen's testimony is going to be really interesting today. She is speaking before the Senate uh, Commerce Subcommittee about her claims against Facebook. Um, you know, what can we expect to hear from her that maybe we didn't hear in the 60 Minutes interview, which was, you know, there was a lot of really interesting stuff in, in that interview. You know, the 60 Minutes interview was incredibly insightful. Even if you think you know everything about Facebook, Make sure to watch that interview because it's loaded with good information. And we expect the same uh, from the testimony today. Look, Haugen is incredibly intelligent. She's also meticulous. And the way she kept records and, and copied documents here was not really nilly. It was precise and with intent. Uh, so I expect that we will hear uh, some kind of precision arguments as well. Uh, she has affirmed that she's not trying to take Facebook down. She's not trying to harm the company. She wants the company to improve. So I would expect her to be very blunt, very straightforward, and present uh, information that might corroborate a lot of the allegations that she made during the 60 Minutes interview. All right, Dan, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say. Always good to see you.